during multiple concurrent planetary alignments, one of which was a total solar eclipse. In the past 48 hours, we have had two powerful earthquakes which have ruptured, which both appear to have released significant amounts of energy into Earth's naturally resonant wavelengths of light, known as the Schumann resonances. Specifically, this magnitude 5.4 earthquake in China is very compelling. We see the energy burst there in mode two of the Schumann resonances, and we see the corresponding increase in the quality factors occurring exactly at the time of that earthquake. So in this video, we are gonna break down these correlations between the Schumann resonances and earthquakes, talk about earthquakes and earth resonances in general, and also talk a little bit more about earthquakes and energy in general and how earthquakes are connected to a variety of phenomenon on our planet. So hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Stefan. Thank you so much for being with me today. We are going to look at our earthquakes via the USGS latest earthquakes app. Here is our magnitude 5.4 in China. This is the most compelling earthquake of the two because it's located so close to our observation station. Here's the epicenter of this magnitude 5.4 earthquake. Also, there is a swarm that's happening in the surrounding area. You can see how close it is to our observation station out of Tomsk, Russia. So it is quite close, which makes this a perfect earthquake to examine in regards to potential release of energy into the Schumann resonances. But we perhaps have some energy release also that is observable from Tomsk with this magnitude 6.6 .6 earthquake here in Indonesia because we do see a significant shift in the Schumann resonances at the Tomsk Russia Observatory, the space observing system immediately preceding that earthquake. But there were no uh, similar shifts observed out of different observation stations uh, in Europe, specifically the one in Chopron. Uh, there was nothing that was immediately apparent there, but of course that's much further away from Indonesia than Tomsk. So these are the relative distances. If we look here, the magnitude 6.6 .6 earthquake in Indonesia was 7,000 kilometers away from this observation station. Uh, you can look at the data here yourself at sosrff.tsu.ru and the magnitude 5.4 earthquake in China was 1,620 kilometers away from this uh, observation station. It was also at a very shallow depth, 6.5 kilometers. So if this earthquake did release any pulse electromagnetic waves in that frequency range from zero to 40 hertz, which the Schumann resonances occupy, it would have to travel through less lithosphere and therefore be attenuated less until it reached the atmosphere and then it could propagate outwards uh, with very little attenuation in the atmosphere. Whereas the Indonesia earthquake, yes, it is stronger. It's 1.2 magnitude stronger, which is quite significant, but it occurred at 35 kilometers of depth. So that is quite a bit more, but we do see a significant energetic shift occurring after this magnitude 6.6. .6. Whereas this is our daylight hours here for Tomsk, we can see the increase in the Schumann resonances due to the rising of the sun, the charging of the ionosphere, and then we also see this big increase of activity. This marked shift in the energies for mode three, we also see that correspond to this Q factor increase for mode three right there. So quite significant happening right around the same time, though this alignment is much better. So I think the magnitude 5.4 is just overall uh, a more clear causative effect between earthquake and energy release that is observable by this observation station. So if we just zoom out for a bit, earthquakes and earth resonances, the color spectrogram to the left right here is a measure of the zero to 40 hertz pulsed electromagnetic waves embedded in the vertical electric field gradient that runs from the conductive ground surface through the resistive atmosphere and up to the electrically conductive ionosphere. So the ground that you stand on is pretty conductive at 10 to negative seven Siemens, but the atmosphere that exists in between the ground and the electrically conductive ionosphere is not that conductive. It's quite resistive actually at 10 to negative 14 Siemens. Ocean air is a little bit more conductive about 10 to negative 13. And the 
ionosphere is quite conductive at also about 10 to negative 7. This is a lower part of the ionosphere and then as you move up the conductivity increases and the density of molecules and ions decreases. So there are two conductive plates of a capacitor effectively in between it's resistive and when you get changes to either this changes the global electric circuit at that area and if you have a increase in the energy flow between them, this could perhaps run through a fault zone. And if it's at a critical stress threshold, this could perhaps rupture that fault because the increase in energy breaks molecular bonds, ionic bonds, atomic bonds, causing the normal stress and pressure that's there to then finally overcome the atomic forces at play. So we see these energy increases after these earthquakes. This right there for the magnitude 6.6, .6, also the increase in the quality factors. I'll discuss what that is in just a second. And then this magnitude 5.4 right here. This is a local weather storm that passed through Tomsk, Russia. If you're wondering what that is, about one inch of snow was dropped. So it shows that local weather activity does influence the background electric field. Uh, of which we are electrically connected to. We are electrical beings. Um, so just FYI, but that is not a global effect. Now, Q factor. What is Q factor and why is it relevant for earthquakes? The quality factor. This is what we're looking at here. We have mode one in white, mode two, 14 hertz in yellow, mode three, 20 hertz in red, mode four, 25 hertz or so in green. So the quality factor is a measure of resonance of an energy system. Effectively, when less energy is leaking from a system and thereby resonating better, the Q factor is higher. So when the Q factor goes up, you have less energy leakage. So when Q factor abruptly increases in the Schumann resonances frequency range, this is typically evidence of ionospheric alterations that increase the suitability for those electromagnetic waves to resonate better and with less energy loss. So we see multiple spikes here in our Q factor. We actually had a big spike in mode two preceding that earthquake out of China, but it's this spike right here that went to about 13.6, which lines up perfectly with that earthquake. And we see that power amplification also line up around that time. Whereas with our magnitude 6.6 .6 earthquake, we get this power amplification right there, lining up with this increase in the quality factor for mode three, 20 Hertz right here, going to a relative value of 24. Now we've seen other pre-earthquake signals and during earthquake signals in the Schumann resonances before, the Q factors have gone up much higher than these values. Uh, there is one instance with the magnitude 7.8 earthquake in Turkey where Q3 went up to 250 or so, is like somewhere in that range, really high. These values, it's the change that is significant and also the timing. This is perfect timing right here. This magnitude 5.4 earthquake in China was at 2156 UTC plus seven. I line that up by the pixel and you get that right there. So quite a significant shift in the energy after that magnitude 5.4 earthquake in China, which occurred really close to that observation station. And then we do see this magnitude 6.6, .6, uh, perhaps related to this energy change right here. It's, it's a little fuzzier, uh, it's further away, greater depth, but there does seem to be at least a correlation there. So I wanted to point that out. Now, in general, the field of earthquakes and predicting earthquakes is very, very new and there's a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot of pushback from established academics in regards to what's connected to earthquakes, what's not connected to earthquakes, whether earthquake prediction is possible. But we do see that sometimes these extremely low frequency energies like the Schumann resonances, also sometimes higher frequency pulse electromagnetic waves are connected to earthquakes both before, during, and after. We see ionospheric changes that occur before, during, and after certain earthquakes, specifically those that are stronger and they're shallower. And we also do see very good correlations between solar activity and earthquakes. This is from my last video that I made. We had a significant drop in 
sunspots, therefore x-ray flux, extreme ultraviolet light flux went down, totally solar irradiance went down, and we see that we had a bunch of earthquakes pop off during that dip in the x-ray flux and overall total solar irradiance as compared to before. Here's our baseline, much higher. This is a log scale, by the way, and then when we get that dip, you see magnitude 6.2 pop off, 7.4 in Taiwan, followed by the aftershock about 13 minutes later, 6.1 Japan, 6.8 near Guam. So there is a connection between the energies of our solar system and the energy of our planet. The Schumann resonances sit a little bit in between that. We've observed the Schumann resonances in the ionosphere, the plasma sphere, and solar wind before, but they are really strongest in that Earth ionosphere waveguide. Uh, but we also see this connection between earthquake activity and solar activity, specifically when there is a lot of loading of solar energy into the Earth and then solar activity goes down, we see this increase of earthquakes afterwards. We also see earthquakes line up with significant planetary alignments. For example, on the 10th today, we have this alignment between Saturn, Mars, and Earth. This is Saturn is the big malefic in astrology. Mars is the lesser malefic. This starts a new two-year cycle of woe, as they call it. This has been linked to bad things happening like earthquakes. So this was not a giant earthquake, but this magnitude 5.4 and 6.6 .6 did happen during this alignment here, Earth, Mars, and Saturn. We also have Earth, Mercury, and the Sun in alignment. This is a Mercury Kazemi. Mercury is in the heart of the Sun. So a perfect alignment there. And then you'll notice the Moon here, just slightly off of that new Moon phase. We on the 8th had a total solar eclipse. So this Sun, Moon, Earth gravity vector was precise because the Moon was not at all at some angle or inclination from the ecliptic. It was perfectly in line with the Earth and the Sun. It actually went in front of the Sun for the daylight side part of the Earth and cast that shadow. And so there's a perfect gravity vector there. We also have alignment between Earth, Jupiter, and Uranus that will become exact on April 20th to the 21st. So we are about 10 days away from that, just a couple degrees off now. So that is also in play. So a lot of significant planetary alignments that are occurring at this moment in time. Some people who really track this in relation to earthquakes have been calling for perhaps a giant earthquake to occur. I can't comment on that too much, but I did want to talk about the connection between earthquakes and solar activity. Solar activity is now going up again. We have some more sunspots on the Earth facing side of the sun. And I also wanted to show the connection between earthquakes and Schumann resonances. Uh, at least this right here is a very nice connection. I would say this is causative. Of course, it's hard to say 100%. What you really want to see when you're looking at this is you want to see the vertical electric field and also the magnetic components show similar signatures. So we don't have the magnetic data for this observing system that was close to China. Uh, so that is unfortunate. If we had the magnetic data, that would be ideal. So then we could put the two together. So that is the video for today. Oh, also, I want to show you just this, uh, this meme right here about the eclipse. I've been seeing these eclipse photos all over social media, and I thought this was quite funny. So yes, let's uh, rein it in and make sure we really kind of focus more on the overall growth and expansion of our consciousness and not get sucked into this ego vortex, which seems to be really consuming people right now during this Aries season. So with that, wishing you all the best, much love, light, and I'll see you all in the next video.